Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I am back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the Hello Sweetheart Stamps, Dies, and Layering stencils. And then also the um, Kind, I think it's called Kind Birthday. You know, I can't remember. Um, so this card is actually my mom's birthday card. And typically when I am doing uh, my mom's birthday card, I usually watercolor it. Why? When that takes so long. I will tell you, I usually watercolor it because I think that watercolor is one of the most beautiful mediums um, to be used in card making. And because it is for my mama, um, I want her to have the most beautiful card. Be honest, that's why I do it. And so because our life is kind of so hectic right now, um, I am actually going to be doing a watercolor cheat is a cheat <laughs> um but it's it's still very pretty and you know i might be able to help out one of you guys who loves the look of watercolor but maybe isn't comfortable doing it a little more traditionally and so i'm working on um the strathmore ready cut watercolor paper sometimes it is hard to get an impression the first time around um, i am stamping in gold ink but you could certainly use just regular embossing ink um, this is gold pigment ink and then i am going to emboss in gold as well the reason that i kind of did it in both was to make sure that i would have really good coverage um and i was so <laughs> i was so excited to do the card i actually did not treat it with my anti-static tool um so really i just kind of hit the lottery here and i didn't have a lot of excess that was sticking before i heat set it um, so I just got lucky, be honest. I, I think I almost did the same thing with the sentiment where I forgot to do it. Now you would think after all the years that I have been heat embossing, which was actually one of the first, um, crafty things like that I ever learned in my own. We'll go back to that story in a minute. Um, but you would think I would remember to do that, but I didn't. So here, um, I was trying to think of like a color combination that would be suiting for my mom. And what I came up with, um, now my mama doesn't like green, okay? Be real with you, she doesn't. But leaves are green, that's life, mom. I'm sorry, it is. Uh, but I picked the color of the flowers as red um, because that is one of her go-to like nail polish colors. Um, because my, my graham cracker loved it so much. Um, so that is, in fact, when, ooh, at her funeral, we all wore red nail polish. Um, but anyway, so that's how I picked the, the colors. And then the blue came about because, um, you know, my mom, I have my mom's eye color, uh, which I passed on to Nathan, um, which is like a, a lighter blue. So my mother looks beautiful in blue. Um, well, she looks beautiful anytime. My mama is a beautiful woman. Um, but uh, particularly in blue, it's kind of, you know, like when you really want to look fancy, you wear your special color. Ours is blue. Um, and so that's how I picked my color scheme. And these, um, you saw me do this before. If you did not see the video of the first time I used this um, stamp dye stencil, um, said it's, I did all of my sheeting with distress ink. I didn't use any, uh, Copic markers. Um, and honestly, I still have not colored this thing with Copics. I should do that because I love this stamp is beautiful. Um, but I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to be adding, um, just some layers of color with, uh, my distress inks to create some depth. And you could just leave it this way. If you don't love the watercolor look, this will, achieve a um, beautiful depth of color with no actual like marker colored pencil uh, traditional coloring medium but I did the several colors because I wanted the color variation in my watercolor so I wanted there to be a couple of colors in there um, for when we add the water and so that's um, that's what we're doing here I so oh so my original story so how I, the first time I ever heat embossed, I had no idea what I was doing. No clue. Um, <laughs> all of my, and people ask all the time, like, did you go to art school or whatever? And like, no, I just sat down and figured it out. I really, when, when my sister got married, um, I made her invitations um, to her uh, 
Oh my gosh, I almost said baby shower. What? We're talking about weddings, Kelly. Get on with it. Uh, to her wedding shower. I wanted to make her invitations. And so I did. And uh, my best friend uh, was helping me. And we were at like Joann's or, you know, something like that because I didn't know anything about crafts. I was not a stamper. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was a scrapbooker. That's how I started. Um, and so I was like, you know, surely we can figure this out. And so um, in talking to one of the people who worked there, you know, we were talking about like maybe a way that we could decorate the envelope um, or something like that. And she um, had suggested heat embossing and I have always been a cheap chicken that is <laughs> that is still not changed and um so I'm standing there and I'm looking at like the embossing stuff and I'm like okay well you need the special ink and then you know you obviously need a stamp and um you have to get this you know special powder and the embossing gun and um talking to her she was like well you can use the gun or you can use like a hair dryer so my cheap chicken brain was like, well, I already own a hair dryer. I mean, I live in a house with, well, myself, two sisters and my mother. There's four girls. Like, you think we didn't have multiple hair dryers? We did. Um, and so I was like, okay, well, that's, that's what I'm going with. So I picked up this embossing powder. I don't even remember what company it was by, but it was a beautiful embossing powder. And her colors were um, like a dusty lilac and a, like a light lavender color and so the embossing powder that I picked was like a purplish when you heated it up <laughs> it was multi-colored it was like a, a multi-chrome embossing powder and now that I know what I'm doing I really wish that I still had it I don't know what happened to it but we found this cute little uh rubber stamp you know like the wooden um mounted rubber stamps and it said getting hitched with these little bells and so I purchased that and the probably like my first pad of Versamark ever in my life. And then um, this embossing powder. And so my best friend and I sat in my parents' family room because I still lived at home. Um, well, I was like 18 at the time and stamped and heat embossed all of these invitations for her wedding shower uh, to seal the envelopes with hair dryers. Yep, that's what we did. 100% you know what? And it worked. It was long, but it worked. Um, now, obviously, I have a, uh, a heat gun, which makes it substantially faster and much less messy. Um, but yeah, that was funny, funny time. So here, like I didn't end up using the wilted violet, even though I showed it to you. I did use the, the picked raspberry just again for the color variation. So here's where the faux water coloring comes in. I have a number two round brush and just a little bit of water. And I'm going to take that from the lightest portion. So the tips of like the petals or the tips of the leaves. And then I'm going to kind of pull that down into the base. If you start at the base and draw it out, um, it's very kind of a one note color. You kind of miss the variation. And if, I mean, that's okay if you're totally into that. That's, that's fine. That's a pretty look too. Um, but I wanted there to be that color variation. I'm not adding very much water, um, because I don't need it. That's the reality of it. I, I don't need it. I just need enough to get the pigment to move. Um, and as you can see, as we add the water, you know, the pigment is much bolder, but it will not stay that way. If you add too much water, by all means, feel free to blot it up with a clean paper towel. If you don't feel like you have enough color variation, then f go in there and, and blot with a paper towel. You will lift up pigment as well. You'll see um, once I get the water added to everything, I am going to do a little bit of that um, just because I felt like I was getting um, a little bit of, you know, a one note kind of look which I was not a fan of um but so I'm just going over this I don't have to worry about um you know working next to two color or um two areas that are wet because the heat embossing kind of keeps everything in its own little area but mostly because everything um you know like as far as the petals they're all done with the same colors and then once I'm done with all of those just because you do pick up pigment on your brush um, I'm going to rinse it off and then I'm going to go back in and do the leaves and do all of the green areas at the same time. 
So, of course, I can't make any card whatsoever without something going awry because that's, that's just, that's creating things, you know? Whether it's cards or cross stitch or furniture, like things just happen and you got to be adaptable. It's super important. When Eric and I were just friends. <laughs> When Eric and I were just friends before I ever even knew that we would have this whole life together, um, he was dating another girl and we were talking about, you know, just relationships in general. And I told him the most important thing you can find in a partner is adaptability. And um, that's still true. Try to be adaptable. It's an important trait to have because almost nothing is going to go the way you expect it. And you got to be prepared for that. So um, here what I'm doing is I'm originally had planned on doing kind of like a washy background with some splatters, which in hindsight is not really my mom's vibe. I'm going to be honest. She's not like a, a messy paint person. Um, but that was my original plan. Uh, so I was just going to fill in the in-between spaces, um, with the, this is salty ocean, you know, blue is my boyfriend. I love him. So, um, and so I was just going to fill that in. There are some areas where I'm kind of picking up um, some of the red or some of the green just because, you know, it's so close to there, but I'm not worried about any of it. So this is the original game plan. Super pretty hard, right? Now I wanted to bring the blue out a little bit to create that background. How I'm going to do that is I'm going to lay down this wash of just clean water and then I'm going to keep the blue really tight like tightly up against my um my heart and I'm going to let it spread out and then I'm just going to keep going around I'm going to put down water and then I'm going to add the blue so it kind of flows out now if you don't want a super flowy look um you know, you'll add less water or just don't even outline it. You don't, don't even do that part of it. Just keep it like tight in the center like I had before. Um, or if you want a much more flowy look, then you can add water to the entire background and just kind of let it do what it do. Um, but you'll see when I start to do the spatters, um, there's two different ways that you can do it. And you'll be able to see both on this card. So you know that I started in the bottom uh, right hand side. So that is drying quite a bit. Where the top left hand side is going to be the most wet because I've just done it. And so when I do my spatters, you'll see in the bottom right, they're much more uniform and true spatters where in the top left, like along the left side where there's more water and it's still wet, they kind of bloom out and become much softer. So think about that. Any, any type of watercolor card that you're doing or any type of card where you're doing the splatters, think about what style of splatters you want. If you want a softer splatter, then do it while the water's wet. If you want something that's going to be um, a much harder edged and a much more uniform splatter, then you want to do it while it is um, a little bit more dry. And so here's where I'm going back in with my paper towel. Um, you want to make sure that you're constantly kind of refolding it and blotting with a clean area because if not, you'll deposit the, the ink back onto your paper where you don't want it. So you kind of constantly have to be, you know, flipping it around. So once I got it to where I was happy with it, I set it aside to dry and now I'm going to work on the sentiment. Um, and I decided I was going to do this in gold. This is um, the Strathmore watercolor paper, the ready cut. The one size I have is a five by seven. So I had already trimmed it down. Um, here's where I remembered. See, I told you I almost forgot again. Uh, I have already trimmed it down to a A2 size card. So five and a half by four and a quarter. And this is the leftover piece of me trimming that. I'm just going to use it for my sentiment because... Um, Sometimes it's hard to find a true white, white watercolor paper. They're all usually just a smidge off white. And so in order for that to um, match like kind of the texture and the things that I had going on, this was my, when I had my original game plan of using the white background, um, I wanted them to match. Now that didn't end up happening. Once this is heat set, I let it cool off and then I'm going to go ahead and die cut it. 
I decided to also die cut out the heart because I didn't like the way the background looked. It just didn't look like my mama. Um, and you guys know, if you watch my videos, that my mom is wonderful and she is um, supportive and she does a million and one things for everybody, uh, including myself and my kids and my husband and our family. And she's always just doing, doing, doing for other people um, because she's amazing. And um, you've heard me talk about that quite a bit. Nothing's changed, folks. She's still pretty awesome. Like still you know, helping me with, with my things, helping me with my children, um, you know, just always there to, to do whatever she can. And I am just endlessly grateful that God chose her to be my mother. And, um, I probably don't tell her that nearly often enough, but fortunately for me, my mom watches my videos. And so now she will know mama, how much I love you. Um, so here I've die cut it out. I've decided I'm going to pop it up on foam and put it on this blue background, um, which I do think is much more, fit, much more fitting of my mom. It's a much cleaner look. Um, and so I just popped that up on uh, foam tape and then I'm going to do ish the same thing with the sentiment. Um, it says love you forever and always, which is obviously true. Um, and then I'm going to just so it's level, I'm going to put foam on the right-hand side and then glue down the left-hand side to my heart. And then I used the um, this inside sentiments for the kindness um, to stamp the inside of her card, which I believe I picked the one that says, um, I can't think of anybody else more deserving of a wonderful day. And it says something like that. And the reality is I can't um, because she's like I told you wonderful fantastic I'm very very blessed to have such a wonderful mother um here these are the um basic gems um from honeybee which you can tell I use a lot a lot a lot uh doesn't really <laughs> doesn't really matter what kind of card it is I, I love them um I still have the sequins I don't use them as much but uh so I used white to pop, kind of pop off the blue background I did go back in with a clear glitter pen because I love all things glitter but be advised, this will reactivate your ink. Um, so you can pick up some of it on your pen if you're um, intermingling uh, different colored flowers. Just be aware of that. You might have to scribble it off in between. Um, or if there's like a specific way that your watercolor looks that you l totally love this, you're kind of risking it. Um, but yeah, so still looks like watercolor, but was so much faster and I still have my color variation. So I was super happy with that. That is, um, the whole card. Uh, I hope you guys learned a little bit of something. Maybe we'll try a little bit of something and thank you so much for stopping by. I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.